is up guys EJ here back with another video and uh, today it's going to be my DVD collection for 2012 and uh, the James Bond section so uh, let's get started up first obviously we have uh, the first film Dr. No from uh, 1962 with uh, Sean Connery in his uh, debut as Bond um, really good film um, I love Joseph Wiseman as Dr. No and uh, Honey Rider, uh, played by Ursula Andress. Um, probably the best and original uh, Bond girl. I love the uh, spider scene, uh, the tarantula scene in the bed uh, in that film. Okay, next we have uh, From Russia With Love from uh, 1963. Uh, my second favorite Sean Connery Bond. Uh, just a great espionage uh, thriller. Um, Robert Shaw is uh, Grant is one of the best uh, henchmen of all time. Uh, just a great performance by him, and it's got so many great moments, especially the uh, the gypsy camp scene with the uh, the girl fight. And yeah, I just love from much of love. Okay, next we have uh, Goldfinger from uh, 1964, uh, my all-time favorite Bond film, and um, my uh, second favorite film of all time. Um, absolutely love this movie. The first uh, half or so dozen scenes um, are just brilliant in my opinion. Uh, from the opening to the stuff in Miami with uh, the girl on the bed painted in gold. Uh, you've got uh, Gert Frobe as uh, Goldfinger. Awesome. Uh, Harold Sakata as Oddjob. Um, just a great memorable uh, henchman. Uh, the Aston Martin DB5, my favorite car of the uh, franchise, has my uh, favorite Money Penny moment, my favorite Q moment, and so on and so forth. Just love Goldfinger. Next, we have uh, Thunderball from uh, 1965. Uh, another good one from uh, the Sean Connery era. Um, yeah, you've got Claudine Auger as uh, Domino, and um, I do think. Thunball is a bit too long to be honest. It's almost two and a half hours. Uh, but the under underwater uh, fight scenes towards the end are some of the best underwater photography of all time. Next we have uh, You Only Live Twice from uh, 1967. Um, Sean Connery's uh, last outing uh, as Bond uh, before Lazenby took over for, for one time. Um, not my favorite Connery Bond film, but of course you've got uh, the great Donald Pleasance as uh, Blofeld. And unfortunately you have uh, Connery being turned into Japanese. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably my second to last favorite Connery outing. Next we have On Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969, of course, with uh, Lazenby in his uh, one and only appearance as uh, James Bond. Um... Again, like Thunderball, I think it's too long. Uh, two hours and 22 minutes, it says right there. Um, it fills it fills that length. Uh, but Diana Rigg, great as uh, Tracy. And um, uh, who am I thinking of? Telly Savalas as uh, Blofeld. A uh, great actor. And it's got some good moments. And the ending is the only, up until Skyfall, the only real, real scenes that really make me uh, tear up is uh, the end of Honor Her Majesty's Secret Service. Next we have uh, Diamonds Are Forever from 1971, um, my least favorite Sean Connery Bond, but um, like my uh, good friend Marcy says, it's a lot of fun, and um, you've got some great characters like uh, Tiffany Case and uh, Mr. Wint and Mr. Kid, the uh, two killers, um, but yeah, it's, it's not my favorite of the uh, Connery era. Next we have uh, Live and Let Die from 1973, of course uh, Roger Moore's uh, debut as James Bond, the uh, black exploitation Bond film as I like to call it. Um, you've got Yafet Koto as the villain, uh, Mr. Big, and uh, I forget his other name at the moment, um, but yeah, he's Mr. Big. And uh, Jane Seymour, great as uh, Solitaire. Next we have uh, The Man with the Golden Gun from uh, 1974. I uh, really enjoyed this Bond film. You've got Christopher Lee, awesome as Scaramanga. And uh, Britt Eklund is a pretty decent Bond girl. And of course you've got uh, Hervé uh, Villachez as uh, Nick Knack. 
Next we have uh, The Spy Who Loved Me from 1977. Many people consider it to be uh, Roger Moore's best. Um, you've got Carly Simon's theme at the beginning, uh, Nobody Does It Better, which is awesome. Uh, Barbara Bach, a uh, great Bond girl as uh, Triple X, Amanya Amasova, or just Anya Amasova, sorry. Um, it's probably my third favorite in the uh, the Moore franchise. I find some of the uh, the sort of jokey scenes a bit off-putting at times, uh, like when he's in Egypt, especially, and of course you got Jaws, uh, which would kill his first appearance as um, one of the greatest uh, henchmen of all time. The action scenes are good, especially with the uh, underwater car. Yeah, Spy Who Loved Me is a great movie. Next we have uh, Moonraker from 1979. Um, you've got, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Michael Lonsdale as a uh, Hugo Drax and um, Holly Goodhead, a uh, great name for Bond Girl, played by uh, Lois Charles. It's got some very good moments. The first half of Moonraker is a beautiful looking film. Of course it gets ragged on when Bond goes up into space. Um, but this was definitely... Uh, in response to um, the popularity of uh, films like Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind at the time. Next we have For Your Eyes Only from 1981. Bond sort of returning to a more uh, traditional espionage type film, quiet, quietening it down. Um, yeah, it's a good film. Uh, Carol Bouquet is very good as, uh, uh, what's her name? <laughs> I'm blanking on her Bond girl name. Uh, you've got Julian Glover as the villain. Uh, it's got some very good moments. I like uh, For Your Eyes Only a lot. Okay, next we have uh, Never Say Never Again from uh, 1983. The unofficial Bond film, of course, with Sean Connery uh, in a remake of Thunderball. Uh, directed by Irvin Kirshner. Uh, with uh, Kim Basinger as Domino and the great um, Barbara Carrera as uh, Fatima Blush and uh, Klaus Maria Brandauer as uh, Largo. Uh, definitely not my favorite Connery outing, uh, but it's an okay film. Again, it's way too long. Next we have Octopussy from 1983, the official Bond film of that year. Absolutely adore this movie, my uh, second favorite Bond film. Um, the action scenes are great and it moves at a, a breakneck pace. Um, you've got uh, Louis, uh, Louis Jordan as uh, Kamal Khan. And um, Maud Adams returning after the man with the golden gun to play the uh, the official Bond girl, Octopussy. Um, I love the music, and it's got probably my favorite scene in the whole franchise. Next, we have a view to a kill. Uh, Roger Moore's last outing of bon as Bond. Um, yes, he does look old in this film, but I really love it. It's my second favorite Roger Moore film. Um, Christopher Walken, awesome as Zorin. Uh, I really like Tanya Roberts. Um, you've got Grace Jones as Mayday. Um, the action scenes are great. The settings, you've got the Eiffel Tower, uh, the great chateau in France, and all the stuff uh, that takes place in uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area, is uh, very sort of close to my heart. Okay, moving on. We have uh, The Living Daylights from 1987, um, Timothy Dalton's first outing. Um, it's kind of a mess in my opinion, the plot wise, uh, plot wise as far as I'm concerned. But you've got a very good cast. You've got uh, Jerome Crabby as um, Koskoff. Um, John Reese Davis is great as, uh, uh, was it Putin or Putin? Whatever his name, Vladimir Pushkin. Sorry, I got, I got it right in the end. I, I got there in the end. One of my saying Putin. Uh, yeah, Pushkin. And um, it's got some good action scenes. And the whole storyline of uh, the Soviets and and uh, the war with uh, Afghanistan is uh, very sort of relevant um, with what's happened in the world um, uh, in the past 10 years. But yeah, definitely not my favorite Bond film. Uh, and the same with the License to Kill. It's actually one of my least favorites uh, from 1989. I just find it too ugly, too violent. Um, but Robert Davi is a, is a good villain as Sanchez, and um, you got the young Benicio del Toro as uh, his right hand man um, Dario. Um, yeah, Talisa Soto is very beautiful, and uh, what's her name as uh, the other Bond girl? I'm blanking on her name. Um, 
certain people will be happy that I forget her name. Anyway, moving on. Next we have a Golden Eye from uh, 1995. Um, Pierce Brosnan's first outing is Bond, and one of my favorite Bond films. I think it's uh, Pierce's uh, best film by far in the in the uh, Bond legacy. Um, just a great story. Uh, you've got uh, Sean Bean, awesome as 006. I like Trevelyan. Uh, Famke Jansen, amazing as uh, Xenia on the top. And I like, um, what's her name? Isabella Skorutko as uh, Natalia. Uh, you've got some great appearances by um, Alan Cummings as Boris. And uh, Judy Dench for the first time play, playing M. And uh, Samantha Bond is uh, Money Penny as well. I liked I liked in uh, in the uh, the Brosnan films. Next we have uh, Tomorrow Never Dies from 1997. Uh, my least favorite of the uh, Brosnan years. Um, I just don't like Jonathan Price in this film. I think he's too hammy, and the whole idea of a sort of media mogul as a Bond villain just did not work for me. Uh, the scene where he makes fun of uh, Michelle Yeoh and her kung fu it just makes me cringe not a terry hatcher fan per se it's got some good action obviously with uh, michelle yo kicking a lot of ass but it's definitely not my favorite uh, when it comes to uh, pierce Brosnan. next we have uh, the world is not enough from uh, 1999 um one of the first bomb movies i can remember actually seeing in a the theater because 1999 was the first year i really sort of uh started going to the theater every week uh, to watch movies and um yeah i enjoyed the world is not enough um but obviously uh gets a lot of crap because of uh denise richards and as a nuclear physicist which is kind of ridiculous and i'm not really a big fan of uh, sophie marceau in this uh there are certain certain scenes where she's kind of annoying i think uh, but she's a good sort of sexy character and uh, Robert Carlyle is great as, um, Christ, I forgot his name too. Renard, that's it. And I like, um, I like that they brought back uh, Robbie Coltrane uh, in his role, uh, the same they did with uh, Goldeneye. I really like him in Goldeneye. And they brought him back for some scenes in this film as well. It's got some good action scenes, especially the beginning. Next we have uh, Die Another Day from uh, 2002. Um, I, I enjoy the heck out of this film, and um, it's just silly and fun, and they actually do manage to do some good stuff with the history of uh, Bond in the 40 years. Um, I can't stand Halle Berry, and she's awful as uh, Jinx, uh, but I liked, um, uh, what's his name, Toby Stevens as uh, Gustav Graves, and it's got some great action scenes, especially the beginning. I like that it sort of put Bond in that amount of danger at the beginning with him being captured and uh, held uh, captive and tortured and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, that's about all I'm going to say about um, Die Another Day. Okay, next we have uh, the Ultimate Editions. They're like, uh, it's four volumes, uh, the first 20 films. Uh, the first one has Goldfinger, Diamonds Are Forever, The Man With The Golden Gun, The Living Daylights, and The World Is Not Enough. And when I watch uh, my Bond films every year, uh, like I did um, at the end of October and beginning of November this year before I saw Skyfall. I always watch them on these editions. Uh, the second one has Thunderball, The Spy Who Loved Me, A View to a Kill, License to Kill, and Die Another Day. And uh, the third one has From Russia With Love, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Live and Let Die, For Your Eyes Only, and Gold Knight. What I like about these editions as well is uh, all the Roger Moore films have uh, great commentaries by Roger Moore himself. Uh, he tells a lot of great stories about all the people he's worked with. Uh, very fun to listen to him. And the fourth one has Dr. No, You Only Live Twice, Moonraker, Octopussy, and Tomorrow Never Dies. The only thing I don't really like about these editions is they're all sort of out of order, as you can tell by what's on them. If they had put them in like in, in order, it would have been better, I think. Okay, but anyway, if I can get it back in there, we can move on to uh, Daniel Craig in uh, Casino Royale from 2006. I know a lot of people love this film, um, but at the time, I did not like the direction the franchise took. Uh, with the character, um, I just did not feel like a proper Bond film at the time. It's growing on me a lot. It's got a great cast, of course, Daniel Craig, 
uh, Ava Green, amazing as Vespa Lind, uh, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, Jeffrey Wright as uh, Felix. But yeah, it just wasn't Bond to me at the time. And uh, Quantum of Solace really sort of soured me on the whole the whole deal as well. Uh, from 2008, and the film starts exact right when uh, Casino Royale ends. Uh, they tried to make a sequel, and it just did not work. It's it's awful, in my opinion. It's my least favorite Bond film. Um, the uh, the villain is so forgettable. I don't even remember his name. And uh, and I didn't really like Olga Kurilenko as the Bond girl as well. Um, it's too short. It's like an hour and a half. Um, yeah, it just felt like... Uh, it was all leftover footage from Casino Royale. They're like, let's throw together a Bond film with uh, with the stuff we didn't shoot for Casino Royale. So uh, that is my uh, Bond collection, of course. Um, I will definitely be getting Skyfall on Blu-ray when that comes out. Um, so I look forward to t talking about that when I do get it. So uh, thank you for watching, as always. Up next will be uh, the Mafia section. So until next time, I'll see ya. Bye.